Greg Backer, thanks for coming back. We've got more videos, we've got more questions. You know the story. Here's an interesting question I get asked time and time and time again. And people get confused. They say, should I eat acid foods? Should I eat alkaline foods? My body's too acidic. It's going to encourage a production of, you know, uh, candida is going to really take off in my body because I'm drinking, you know, Dr. Peppers, I'm eating fries and having pizzas and stuff. So, you know, that's bad. And other people say, well, you know, what the heck? I'm going on a cleanse. I'm going on a diet. I'm going to eat more alkaline. I'm not going to have a problem with candida. I'm not going to have a problem with SIBO or bacteria because I'm going to put my body into an alkaline state. Well, let me tell you guys, there's so much crap on the internet, you know, and just like Trump says, fake news, fake news, fake news. This is all fake, okay? You've got to try and understand that yeasts are very intelligent little organisms. They're very clever. They've been around for millions of years. They've been around a long, long time. They survived nuclear holocaust. They survived just about every kind of thing you can imagine. Well, they tell you that cockroaches were the only creatures that survived after Hiroshima and Nagasaki after the atomic bomb, but yeast can probably survive anything. Yeasts like bacteria can live in the most ridiculous environments, okay? I mean, they found organisms in places you couldn't even, even imagine organisms to live. But remember, yeast are survivors, okay? They can adapt to just about any kind of environment, whether it's an acid environment or an alkaline environment, they will live there. They actually secrete chemicals and they've got ways and means of manipulating ammonia and you know different different sort of nutrients around them to increase or decrease the pH at their own will. So regardless of what you eat, okay, you could live on apples all day, you could live on steak all day, you can still have candida, it can still thrive in your body. Now they will favor an alkaline environment, they'll try and push that alkalinity out. Let me read something here for you. I found an interesting study. Uh, adap adaptation of fungi to pH. Variations in the host is critical for the survival of yeast. And fungal pathogens are capable of actively modulating the environmental pH. Acidification of the host tissues promotes expression and activity of fun fungus. Uh -huh. So they do like acid, but they also will thrive on alkaline. Many fungi utilize nitrogen or carbon metabolism pathways to generate ammonia, which is released from the cell to raise the pH. So generation of an alkaline pH by the yeast favors okay, morphogenesis, so actually the growth of more yeast. And also the reproductive stages in fungi are greatly enhanced <clears throat> when, the, when the fungus can manipulate the area around it and push up the alkalinity. Okay, so there'll be more germination, there'll be more hyphal growth, so more of those strands, more of those hairs. Also, penetration actually into the gut wall can occur more easily under a higher pH and under a lower pH, or according to research. So, the alkaline pH increases fungal virulence by facilitating penetration into host surfaces and hindering the immune processes. Remember also that Candida albicans is a very clever little thing. It should have been a politician, it's so smart, all right? And in fact, what it does, it also releases almost like what these jets do. You know, you see, I don't know if you guys are interested in jet fighter YouTube videos, well I am. But a fighter jet can f scream through the sky and release little kind of things behind it to foil an attack of a missile. So a missile will, you know, hit those little things that the plane drops out of it, thinking it's some kind of a heat, a heat coming off the plane. Now, fungi are the same. They can release gliotoxins and various kind of poisons around them to neutralize the immune system and also literally to sort of hide them or cloak themselves. They're very, very intelligent. So, but I want you to try and get into your mind that don't try and have this fallacious belief Okay, because it is a fallacy. It, it, it's not real. Okay, it's not science. Don't have this belief that candida thrives in an acid body or thrives in an alkaline body. Candida can thrive in any body, all right? Especially when the immune system is compromised. So when a person's taken a big hit stress-wise, they've had a poor diet, they may have gone through a divorce, they've had something bad happen to them or whatever, and they're feeling like crap, all right? Now, the operative word is feeling. They're feeling bad. Their immune system is going down, and of course, that's when candida strikes, all right? Especially after the person's been to the doctor and had a, a prescription for antibiotics because they're told that's, that's the only drug they need to cure all their illnesses, an antibiotic. 
It's either that or an antidepressant, take your pick. So one of those two are thrown at a patient and they're feeling bad and of course down they go. So don't be fooled, all right? Don't think just because you're eating junk food you can get candida because I've seen some people with outstandingly healthy diets be full of yeast infection as well. Remember, okay, it's the terrain, the environment of the person. It's not always just the organism. Thanks for tuning in.